25 years of Linux. We made it, 25 years. What an accomplishment. Uh, I want to welcome all of you today to uh, LinuxCon. Uh, we are happy to have uh, everyone here this week, and we have got uh, quite a week in store for all of you. Uh, as people come in, uh, we've got uh, limited seating, so we'll try and make room as more and more people roll in here, everyone. Uh, I'd first like to uh, thank our sponsors. I'd like to thank our diamond sponsors, Huawei, IBM, and Microsoft. Our uh, platinum sponsors, Citrix, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, Intel, Red Hat, and SUSE. Uh, and finally, our gold sponsors, Datadog, Oracle, SanDisk, and Virtuoso. Uh, so thank you very much. Let's give our sponsors a big hand. So I'm not going to go through our agenda this week, but suffice to say it is stunningly good. We have leaders from all over the Linux ecosystem here this week, wonderful speakers. Uh, we have people who are doing incredible things with uh, code way beyond Linux, uh, open source uh, containers, everything you need to know is in the mobile app, so go ahead and check that out. I do, however, want to give one quick reminder for a special event this week. Uh, so as, as all of you may know, Thursday, August 25th, is the 25th anniversary of Linux. It's the day where Linus Torvalds, 25 years ago, sent out his note uh, introducing this uh, funny little operating system that wouldn't amount to much of anything. And as a part of that, we have a black tie I want to emphasize the word optional, a black tie optional gala on Wednesday evening. And for any of you who wish to don formal wear, and I'm just going to do a little humble brag here, uh, I'm going to be wearing my wedding tuxedo from quite some time ago. You may notice the fit is a little bit like this uh, these days, but uh, if you need formal wear, uh, our event staff will be able to help you, and we have uh, rentals available for anyone, so please take advantage of that. And Linux at 25 is a big thing. You know, uh, most things uh, in life just don't last as long and are as enduring as Linux. And Linux has gone so far beyond, I think, what anyone who has participated in this community could have ever expected. Linux today really is, and, and now it's more than just my normal hyperbole, is the most successful software project in history. I mean, just look at these statistics. They are breathtaking. 53,000 source files, 21 million lines of code, thousands of developers creating billions of dollars of software value. Linux isn't just a big endeavor in terms of code. Linux has become the world's most widely adopted software, coming to dominate the high-performance computing market, the computers that run weather forecasting systems, climate modeling, economic modeling, all the big data systems that are out there today. It's the dominant platform for mobile devices, powering Android, embedded systems, and more. It runs the global economy, quite literally. It runs the vast majority of uh, stock exchanges. Uh, it runs the vast majority of the internet, powers things like Google, Facebook, Amazon, and much, much more. It isn't just the adoption of Linux, but it is the sheer pace of Linux that is so impressive. 10,800 lines of code added, 5,300 lines of code removed, and 1,800 lines of code modified on average every single day. 365 days a year, every year, and this pace is only accelerating. Linux now changes seven, eight times an hour. There is no single software project by any single person or organization that rivals the breadth, pace, depth, adoption of Linux. What an incredible run. And for all of you who are in the audience today who have participated in Linux in some way, shape, or form, let's give ourselves a hand for the incredible work that all of you have done. It is truly amazing. It is a 
technical market feat that is unrivaled. But on the 25th anniversary, I think it's worth stepping back and asking ourselves, what has Linux proven? What, what is it that Linux has really taught the world beyond maybe the fact that open source is a better, faster, cheaper way to produce software? Has Linux proven that having no technology roadmap actually works? Maybe, uh, maybe Linux proved that uh, because of Linux, Git was created by Linus Torvalds as well, as well, and it proved that Git is just an incredibly great tool for building software. Does it prove that Linus Torvalds is a great leader? The kernel community is perfect in everything they do. Does it, uh, <laughs> that got a laugh. <laughs> Clearly not perfect. Uh, does it prove that developers are really the new kind of kingmakers in technology? Does it prove that Linus was right, microkernels do suck after all? <laughs> Maybe it proves that this year actually will be the year of the Linux desktop. <laughs> all right, that's right. Maybe it proves some of these things. Maybe it proves all of these things, but nobody is perfect. And when I think about what it all boils down to. The one important thought that Linux has proven is that you can better yourself while bettering others at the same time. I think if you really boiled it down to one thing, this is what matters. This is what in books and in television shows and when any, anyone studies sort of the sharing economy or you can call it conscious capitalism or the purpose economy or whatever you want to call it. It's simply sharing and it works. Companies can get started, people can scratch their technology itch, and they can better themselves while bettering others at the same time. And many people think, you know, well, is this some kind of hippie thing? And I think a lot of people for a long time thought that. But Linux has proven that it's not. And what it also proves is that sharing, making yourself better while making others better at the same time, is hard. It's hard work. You're going to hear this week from business leaders who, have, who are running multi-billion dollar companies where all of the software they create is freely available to everyone. You're gonna hear from leaders who depend on open source software to run their companies. You're gonna hear from governments who depend on open source software to run society. And it's hard to do. People in this audience, people who work on Linux, people who work in the business of Linux, people who work around all aspects of the open source ecosystem work hard. And the reason they work hard is because sharing and making yourself better while making others better at the same time is a higher purpose. It matters. And that is the magic of Linux and open source. That is what this movement and Linux in particular, over 25 years, has accomplished. And it is amazing. And I wanna show you how important that is and how that touches individuals' lives by showing you a quick video of a kid who I think is sort of emblematic of just how important Linux and open source can be to people's lives. Let's show that video. We had a family PC since uh, about 2010, and in 2012, I started. I, I heard of uh, Linux, and I started experimenting uh, with it a lot. I think my first uh, distro was Ubuntu 12.04 uh, that I tried out in uh, VirtualBox. I don't know too much programming. I don't even know much programming, but I would still uh, love to learn programming and even get a job, you know, maybe someday I could probably become a sysadmin in Linux. I could uh, help people use Linux. 
It was a school project. Of course, I decided to send a letter to uh, Linus Torvalds. He was my hero, and um, I was actually doubting I would actually be able to find out, you know, who I could send it to. Then I remembered how much I love Linux, and you know, how much I wanted to meet Linus Torvalds. So I decided to send him a letter. You know, all of my other friends sent letters to, you know, more Hollywood or internet celebrities, but uh, I doubt they actually got flown to you know, a good place like this to meet them. Meeting Linus Torvalds was a great experience. Once the um, whole panel thing was done, he went out of the stage, um, went to uh, my row, and we shook hands. And he signed my uh, Linux Bible, and he gave me a copy of his uh, Just For Fun book, with a signature, of course. I loved meeting uh, Linus Torvalds, and it was a great experience overall. I got to have got to have so much uh, goodies or swag, and it made me think, you know, all this, all these things. Like, my future is going to be great, and um, you know, I loved it. This is what Linux has accomplished. There aren't just a couple. There are thousands of kids walking around with a dog-eared Linux Bible who believe in what all of you are doing. Maybe not all of them get to come to an event like this, but they're inspired by the work that all of you do every day, sharing, making yourself, your company better, while bettering others at the same time. It is an incredible accomplishment. And so the question is, where do we go from here? What does the next 25 years look like? Well, first I want to tell all of you that open and sharing is here to stay. Because it's not just Linux. It's way beyond that. Linux is the inspiration, but now we've entered into a new era. There are millions of open source contributors worldwide, billions of lines of code across thousands of open source repository, hundreds of companies being started based on open and shared technologies. Over 10 of those are worth more than a billion dollars. Billions of dollars more are being invested into a future that is based on sharing. And that is a tremendous accomplishment. You see, the first generation of open companies, open source shared companies, we're really emulating software and technology of the past and trying to make it free and shared. And sort of, sort of taking a market and making it more affordable, more accessible. But that has all changed. Today, open source isn't about emulating the past. It's about defining the future. This is what this movement, the open source community, and Linux has accomplished is that this is a better way to define the future. That all of us are smarter than any one of us. Today, you literally cannot make anything by building all the software you need by yourself. Today, the vast majority of code in any modern technology, product, or service is open source. It is essential for competition. And that essential nature of using open source for competition also betters everybody else. So that folks can invest in the things that matter to their customers or to themselves and share the vast majority of software that needs to be written. Because there is just too much software to be written for any single organization or person to write themselves. So where do we all go from here? What are some aspirations that we can all think about and go out and do the same kind of work that everyone has done with Linux. You know, we started with Linux here at the Linux Foundation. The Linux Foundation was really created to be a home for people like Linus Torvalds and to promote and protect Linux. But the Linux Foundation has grown beyond that, and Linux and open source 
have grown far beyond that, not just the Linux Foundation, but all organizations involved in open source. Today, the modern technology stack is literally defined by open source. All the way from the top with programming frameworks like Node.js, the world's fastest growing, most widely deployed web programming framework, all the way down to the networking sector that is being entirely transform transformed through software abstraction. You're gonna hear from a speaker today at one of the world's largest network equipment companies who are embracing open source to redefine the modern network. From data plane services, things like OVS, IOVisor, FIDO, to network controllers like Open Daylight, to network function virtualization, which are taking firewalls and telecom equipment and abstracting into software and giving it away as open source all the way up to application platforms like Cloud Foundry or uh, things like Kubernetes and the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. This is amazing. This represents billions and billions of dollars in software value, trillion dollars in aggregate economies. It is impressive. But I think we can do more. I think there's a bigger opportunity, and we at the Linux Foundation want to work with everyone to capture this opportunity. Because it's not just the stack, it's not just a horizontal stack. Where we have some opportunities is up and down the stack. Not just in integrating them or creating interfaces that allow these different levels of the stack to work more effectively together. That's already happening in these communities. But how can we make everything better. Well, what if we decided that we could make software more secure across every open source project? The Core Infrastructure Initiative is an example of this. It's a multi-million dollar fund that we're using to make all open source projects better, to provide resources to those projects that need them, to provide better testing, fuzzing, analysis, responsible disclosure policy and so forth to every open source project. You see, it's up and down that we can do great things. Better governance, better neutral ownership of the intellectual property assets that run modern society. Better management of the intellectual property obligations that come with open source licenses and the intellectual property trademarks and frameworks that govern the great sharing of all of this code and better training and certification to allow the practitioners who use this great open source technology to catch up with the rate and phenomenal pace of the development of this great technology. You see, for the next 25 years, we can make all of this better. And we can do better than that. We can bring diversity to all of this. We can create more effective civil discourse across all of this. We can bring people from all cultures and backgrounds together to create this code up and down the stack and make it more effective across these stacks. That's the important thing that we can all do together, inspired by a singular goal, knowing that we can make ourselves better at the same time we make other people better. Because what we're really doing here is building the greatest shared technology resource in the history of computing. And that is what matters. That is what Linux has inspired all of us to do, to come together in a singular inspired vision to work collectively, whether you're working on security, a particular part of the stack, a particular aspect of our community, for a particular company, or just as an individual. Together, we are creating something that will be unparalleled in history. We will have created this incredible shared asset that generations of people will benefit for from years to come. And so at that, I want to congratulate all of you on 25 years of Linux, and let's give a round of applause to 25 more. Congratulations. <laughs>